All right, good evening, and welcome to a meeting of the Council of the City of Long Beach held Tuesday, March 19th, 2024, at 7 p.m. If I can get the slide to advance. We'll have a roll call. Councilmember Bendo. Present. Councilmember Lester. Here. Councilmember Reinhardt. Here. Councilmember Fiamara is absent. President Finn. Present. Let the record indicate the presence of City Manager Dan Creighton and Co Corporation Council Dennis Cohen. We'll now have a salute to the flag. I'd like to ask John McNally to lead us in the pledge. Welcome everybody to our meeting. Thank you for attending. I'm going to ask Dan for the city manager's report. Okay, thank you, Brendan. Um, as many of you are aware, the project on Park Avenue between um, Long Beach Boulevard and Riverside has started. Um, they're approximately halfway done with the most disruptive active, the most disruptive aspect of the work on the north side of the block. We continue to work with them to try to minimize the impact to our businesses and are highlighting the businesses along that stretch on the city's social media pages. Um, we encourage residents to patronize them during this period um, to help reduce the, um, the impact on them. Uh, we're, we're excited to bring an attractive and uniform look to our central business district, and this will be the start of more to come um, similar type projects along Park Avenue. Um, on other public work fronts, delivery and installation of um, new equipment for the Pacific Playground should commence before the end of the week. The goal is to have a playground fully reopened by Memorial Day. Um, in addition to that, work will recommence this week on the 200 block of East Pine Street between Long Beach Boulevard and Monroe. We appreciate everyone's patience on this project and look forward to a fully reconstructed roadway and sidewalks in the week, in weeks ahead. We'll be having a work session of the City Council in the OEM office tomorrow evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Among the topics of discussion will be a proposal to install a few electric vehicle charging stations along Kennedy Plaza and an update on the North Shore Critical Infrastructure Project. Work sessions are an opportunity for the Council to uh, have deeper dives on particular issues uh, that may affect uh, the way they make it. On, and, I'm sorry, may affect um, whether or not they end up on the agenda moving forward um, for a regular City Council meeting. The public is encouraged to attend, but public comment is not allowed at these uh, working sessions. If an item makes its way onto the official agenda, public comment would be encouraged at that time. Um, on a few other fronts, our annual Easter egg hunt is this Saturday at the rec fields beginning at 10 a.m. Registration is required, so please visit the rec center to do so or call 431-3890 um, with any questions. Uh, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society will be holding their annual fun run at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday, March 30th. The group will be gathering at the Alegria beginning at 7.30 that morning. Uh, Google U.S. Coffee Four Mile Run for more information. H&L uh, Contractor is um, proposing uh, closing the Meadowbrook Parkway from Loop Parkway to Wantoa Parkway in both directions for restoration of lane striping. I just want to bring this to people's attention if uh, people use that road. Uh, full closure will occur from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., Monday through Friday, beginning on April 15th and ending approximately April 26th. So this will be a big impact to anyone that uses that road. Just want to bring that to everyone's attention. Um, Long Beach Adult Learning Center is um, doing a business participation forum, basically a job resource fair, April 24th from 12 to 4 p.m., um, and Thursday, April 18th from 12 to 4 p.m. at the Long Beach Public Library, I believe there'll be a job fair for high school students. Sorry, I have a lot of issues here today. Um, lastly, April is uh, Earth Month, and we just want to get a couple of dates on everyone's calendar. 
Uh, Sunday, April 14th, this is the city of, um, city of Long Beach is holding an e-cycling and shredding day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. behind City Hall. As you do your spring cleaning, please drop off any old computers, monitors, scanners, DVD players, and other such electronic equipment for proper recycling. We'll also have paper shredding and, recycl and recycling truck available, so bring in any old files that may be collecting dust in your basement. Um, this event is free to residents of the city. The following Sunday, April 24th, 4th, the city is partnering with the town of Hempstead, Hempstead for our um, Stop Throwing Out Pollutants event. This event will be from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. behind City Hall. Residents are encouraged to drop off items like batteries, paint cans, antifreeze, and other hazardous household uh, materials for proper disposal. This program goes a long way to keeping our household safe and the surface, um, you know, the planet and drinking water clean. Uh, we encourage our residents to participate if possible. Um, I believe that's all I have for the city manager report. Sorry to take so long. Is April 20th the canal cleanup day? Is what? April 20th the canal cleanup day. Oh, and, and I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's the canal cleanup day. Um, Roy did mention if, I, I'm not sure the date. He believes the canal cleanup day is April 20th, but I, I'll confirm that. I'll try to ask John McNally put something out on our website to uh, confirm that for residents. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, I just want to add one thing. The, uh, the zoning board meeting on Thursday night, March 21st, uh, one item on the agenda is a proposed building on West Broadway uh, or between Grand and Lindell, 558 West Broadway. That has been taken off the agenda for, th for this Thursday's meeting, and it will be on its own night. Uh, I don't have that date, but in case anybody planned on going just for that, I wanted to let you know. It's uh, certainly of interest to me and many other people in, in town. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. On to the agenda. First item is a public hearing for a local law amending the charter of the city of Long Beach regarding miscellaneous provisions. So, so just real quick um, to mention, this is, this is really just a cleanup item of our charter. Um, we have currently have a tree board as part of our, our charter. Um, this, this hearing and eventually vote is to enact removing the tree board and combining it into the environmental advisory board. Thanks. Any, any comments from the council? Okay. Uh, Dan, I, I think I've asked you this question before, but just so I, I'm clear. Currently, how many members are there on the tree board? Right now, I believe there's none that's appointed. There, there are supposed to be, I believe, seven okay. on it, uh, but none are appointed. There was one that we just interviewed for it, but we're going right. to actually uh, put her on the environmental advisory board instead. And when was the last time they met, the tree board? It, it, we, we checked, and they have not met in 10 years. Okay, so, so it's a good move. Yes. Thank yes. you. No problem. Any other comments from the council? <laughs> <laughs> Any comments from the public? Thank you. We'll close it. Okay. Our second public hearing is for an ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances of the City of Long Beach regarding various boards and commissions. So this is a similar cleanup item. Um, there are several other commissions that are um, that are part of the. Uh, Code of Ordinances. There's a Municipal Civil Defense Council, um, which also has not met in some time and has no members, Roy, um, on it currently. Um, and there's also a c civil defense organization. Um, we are looking at taking those and combining them into our Public Safety Commission. So I just think it's, a, again, a, an item that we haven't used. I believe this is out, outstanding and outdated from back when um, we were at war, I guess, and um, See, Dan, you're not old enough to remember, but when we were in Catholic school, we used to have the drills, and we would hide under our desks, as if that would do anything for a nuclear bomb. But <laughs> we went out into the hallway, Roy. Oh well, they didn't care yeah, that during much the Pueblo. <laughs> when the Pueblo got hijacked, hardly anybody remembers that one. I'll bet. Any other comments from the council? Just a, uh, I guess, a quick question. Have we just verified that there's no, 
even though these things are archaic in nature, that there's no requirement to maintain them for purposes of federal aid or anything like that or state aid? Um, I have not checked specifically on whether the, those actual commissions are tied to it. I know that the tree board was tied to be uh, a tree city. We had applied for a tree city status at one time. Right. Um, I don't believe we're keeping that up because I did check the site and we're not currently a tree city. Um, as far as municipal um, and civil defense, um, I don't know if there's any uh, public safety grants that we get out of that, but I believe that since it will be still part of our public safety commission, I think it will still, will still be uh, meeting that threshold if, if, if needed. Okay. Good, John? Yeah. Any comment from the public? I thank you. We'll close that. Okay, on to the regular calendar. Item one is a local law amending the Charter of the City of Long Beach regarding miscellaneous pro provisions. A hearing's been held on this item already. Item two is an ordinance to amend, the to amend the Code of Ordinances of the City of Long Beach regarding various boards and commissions. A hearing's been held on this item already. Item three has been removed from the calendar. Item four is a resolution authorizing budget amendments to the Community Development Fund for the 48th program year. So I have uh, Patty here to talk more about this, but this was as mentioned in the last um, City Council meeting, we were awarded an additional $300,000 in, in grants for the CDBG money. Um, uh, this is basically how that money will be spent um, between uh, uh, various three, three different areas, parks, playgrounds, fire station upgrades, and the uh, hockey rink, um, to spend that 300000 So this resolution will, uh, will make that effective. So if, Patty, if you want to speak a little bit more to this, please. Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Patty Bourne, Director of Economic Development and Planning, and Tyler Huffman is with me. He's Director of our Community Development Program. This is really good news for us. As the City Manager says, we receive from Nassau County Community Development Block Grant funding, which comes from the federal government, from HUD, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And the county distributes it based upon a formula, because uh, we're part of their consortium. And in the past 12 months, we've done a tremendous job in cleaning up financial problems and accountability issues, and the county considers us in very, very good shape. Therefore, the good news is that we've received an additional $300,000 from the county from this program for what's called the 48th year. We're currently in the 49th year, so it was for last year, and that will more than double our original allocation from $280,050 to $580,050, which is tremendous. And Tyler's just going to briefly explain the program. So, um, uh, this, so this money here, um, I'm just going to give you a breakdown of how this, uh, this money is being spent. So this is all, as Patty mentioned, this is pre-approved uh, CDB Thank 
like this. Um, we're very thankful to the county that they selected it, selected us this year. Patty mentioned you've been doing a lot of work um, as the city to, to increase our standing and better our relationship with the county. And I think that's definitely paying off. They trust us now to, to give us this money and make sure it's done appropriately and you know efficiently. So. Um, so very thankful to the county that they selected us this year. So this resolution will amend the budget lines to increase, uh, to increase them so we can receive the extra money and uh, uh, put it to use. Th Any questions from the council? Just one, uh, and I'm not sure if you're the people to answer it. The uh, air compressor that the fire department got the money for, was that for the Scott Packs or is that for tires. Hello? Okay, there we go. There you go. Um, I think it's the it's a system that fills the portable air it, tanks, the breathing tanks that the fire That's Scott Packs. Yeah. It's, it's to fill the Scott Packs. Yeah, okay, thanks. I, I'm just going to add, um, I think Mike would echo this. In fact, um, maybe I'm stealing it. From them, but very happy to see the uh, the ice rink uh, get some upgrades there too on that. So thank you for your efforts on that. Any comments from the public? Thank you. No, there come. We have a comment. <laughs> I'm thanking the commenter. Uh, just while she's coming up, just one quick question. We, we've gotten some feedback about Sherman Brown Park. Um, but you said this has to be used for already existing projects. Yes. So we, yeah. it, since Sherman Brown wasn't already existing, it Sherman be Park, Sherman Brett, well, the, so these projects had to be completed and paid for by June. The Sherman Brown project doesn't hit that criteria. I think it's either going to be a fall or a next spring project. Okay. So. And we have and we have other money that we're looking to do a really great job at Sherman Brown. Thank you. Uh, Wanda Brooks. Uh, you said there was an additional 125000 for Magnolia? Yes, this is, it's an additional um, 148000 that's going toward the, Mag it's, it's a combined, the, the costs for that project were combined for the Magnolia uh, playground upgrades and the Leroy Kiner's parks upgrades. So that money is going toward reimbursing the city for, for that particular project. The 148000 yes. you said? Yes. So... It's going to cover Magnolia and upgrades for Leroy Kind. Leroy, Park? but these yes, but these were already done last last year. So this is a reimbursement of the cost that the city already. So how incurred. much did the um, the two items that was put in Leroy Kanye's Park cost? Like I don't. That's all that I, was put in there. I don't know that answer. I don't have that breakdown. Why do we can get it for you? Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Thank you. Oh, sorry. I was vague in my pointing. Good evening, gentlemen. Crystal Lake. I would just like to mention that the Sherman Brown Park, um, this scenario has been ongoing since on or about 2011. Um, is it on? It's on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Thank you. The Sherman Brown Project has been ongoing for approximately since 2011. Yes, um, October 29th, 2012, Hurricane Sandy dampened, you know, the progress. However, it is, what? 13 years later, that we're still speaking about the same thing through various administrations. So anything that can be done to expedite this, to engage our youth um, in the summer months, to have a beautiful, safe location, you know, to play, uh, family-oriented, it would be greatly appreciated because as time goes on, it's the fall, it's the spring, it's the yada, yada, yada. And I think that is a very unfortunate circumstance. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you. 
Patty, did you say that uh, Sherman Brown Park is, is uh, p possibly in the future? Yes, you know, it's, it's in, it's the timing, I think, is to be determined. It's either going to be the fall or potentially the spring. We're going after grant funding that could reimburse or pay most, most of the project costs, but the timing of that grant. So, um, yeah. yeah, let's yeah, let Joe, Joe up, because I think we're nearly done with the, um, with yes, the design. Yes, thank you, so. and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, yes, um, I just wanted to give a quick update on that. Um, just as a little background, I think, uh, Crystal, you and I, and James Hodge, and, and Miss Odom, and Wanda, I think you're back here somewhere. She's back. Yes. We all met in the city manager's office about two weeks ago, right. and we basically showed the proposed design for Sherman Brown Park. It's a proposed $650,000 upgrade to that park, and it includes um, a tile basketball court that's similar to what we have at uh, Veterans Memorial Park. We're gonna be putting in two gigantic uh, shade shelters similar to what's at Magnolia. We're gonna be putting in um, uh, school-age children, um, piece of apparatus for children five to 12. Um, at that meeting, we basically, which was a great meeting, I think you'd agree, right? We had a great meeting. The only issue was there was some question as if we wanted to put some exercise equipment in there. So I'm going back to uh, place site structures, that's the company that manufactures the equipment, to basically um, see if there's any type of fitness equipment that we could kind of fit around the perimeter. So I've tried to get a meeting with them. I'm in the process of doing that. They're going to revise the drawings, and I'm hoping we could reconvene in the next two weeks to, um, to hopefully finalize the drawings and move forward. But again, it's a $650,000 improvement that we're going to be uh, moving forward with. The issue is the date. You know, will it be the, spring, uh, the fall or the spring? But we're going we're to try to do the best we can. Okay, and okay. everything that... Um Mr. Um, Fabrizio stated is accurate. Okay, we did have a phenomenal meeting and there were some slight changes. However, it is the time frame, gentlemen, that is ex severely concerning. And why should a project take, what, 14, 15 years? Honestly, I'm tired of standing here and speaking about the same old things year after year with various administration. But I do appreciate each and everyone's time and all efforts. Um, that is absolutely correct. But I think that this should be expedited because an emergency could occur next year and now we're back behind another eight ball. So thank you for your time. Thank you for okay. your time. Thank yeah, you. I just wanted to mention one more thing. One of the big problems with the equipment is the lead time on the equipment. Just for example, they mentioned earlier that the Pacific Boulevard Playground equipment is coming in this week. That was ordered six months ago. So that's part of the problems. Funding is a big issue too. But um, the equipment, getting the equipment on site is a huge obstacle to getting it done timely. Just wanted to mention and, that. And Gentlemen, I, I do not want to be in my 70s still talking <laughs> about the park, okay? I, I want to so, get to mine, though. <laughs> Someday. So me, okay. So if I could just add one last thing. I, you know, it's very important for us to get this right. We want to make sure it's done right. We, we get all of the community's concerns, and we do it the way that it needs to be done. The only caveat to that is every time that we change it, it's going to delay it because if we every time we want to change the drawings, it goes back to the designer, goes back, and that ends up a delay. So either we we decide we're there or as far as we want to go, or we move or we don't move forward. It's got to be one or the other. We can't say we want it tomorrow and then change the design. It's got to be one or the other. So we do want to make sure it's right. I know Joe is really stressing that to make sure that everybody's happy, but in the process, it, it's hard to make everybody happy. It's like you know. There's, there's sometimes there's different points of view. We want to get it right, I, but if every time we change the design, it does delay it. So we just need to make sure that we, we, we find a final solution and we all approve it and accept it and move forward. Because every time we change it, just get to your I, point, we'll delay it further. I understand wholeheartedly. I'm retired now, going on three years, and I'm still acclimating to retirement because of COVID. However, I know when I had to meet deadlines. I retired from Nassau Community College. Deadlines had to be met no matter what. There are occasions when those deadlines may not be met, but once again, we're still talking about 14, 15 years, and uh, I'm, I'll be 70, 67 this year. 
I do not want to be 72 or 73 to see the park come to fruition. Thank you. There's no way that you're 67. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that for one second. Yeah. And I think one thing that we can do too is just for full communication and transparency. So as we get updates, I think it'd be great if we sent it out to the public so the residents know where we are. Because obviously we can't speak to years past, but there is momentum behind this now and we want to keep everybody updated. Okay, thank yep. you so much. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Another comment from the public? Good evening, I'm Helen Dorado Alessi, the Executive Director of Latino Civic Association, uh, headquartered right here in Long Beach. Two, two comments and a question. Number one, if the CDBG money is going to the hockey rink, I would ask that we have more, do you know how many hours we have available to the general public? For the hockey rink. To play hockey. Joe. To ice skate. For the general public, public skates. Yeah. Joe, I, we have Joe here from the rec center. He should be able to give you. I can tell you. <laughs> oh, that was a, that was a rhetorical question. Yes. <laughs> okay. 1.30 to 3 o'clock on Saturday and 12.15 to 1.45 on Sunday. So being that it's for the whole community, I would ask that you review those hours and see if you can give us more hours for the public to skate. Also, we're telling people they have to bring their own skates. A lot of kids can't afford skates. You, you grow out of the skates, and it's very expensive. So I'm wondering if there's something that we could do with that money to also buy skates so kids can actually use them. Second thing, in the past, the nonprofit sector in Long Beach received help through the CDBG process. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use it for the city in the way you're using it, but I'm saying a very small grant could go a long way for our sector. We are so fortunate to have a nonprofit sector. Island Park doesn't have one. Oceanside barely has one. We're so fortunate to have safety net programs here in Long Beach. It would be such an amazing pat on the back for us who are in the sector to actually get some kind of a thank you from the city for the work we do by, I'm talking about a thousand dollar grant, would go so far for us. Thank you. Thank you. Is that possible? Patty, do you want to touch on, I know we were talking about the possibility of, um, of spreading some of the uh, funds out to some community uh, services. Yes, uh, in the past, the city did provide some grants to nonprofits, as Helen Alessi just said. Uh, it was a minimum size and had requirements of $4,000. For a couple of years, it wasn't the city's policy, but we've talked with the city manager about going back to that. Unfortunately, we cannot do it for this year or for next year uh, in terms of the application we just submitted, but why we can't do it easily, we could do it, is that if we talk to the county, it would require us to renegotiate our contract. And if you know the county process, that would hold up our funding for months because they have a very long, complex process to approve a new contract. So they advised us to go for next year. But that, I might just say, too, that we do have a nonprofit mailing list, and when Tyler and I I will also add, it is on our radar, and we are looking at the possibility of getting back to those sorts of grants. We, know, we understand that even a small amount of money makes a big difference to certain organizations, so we are looking at it. And just to touch upon what you were talking about for public skates as well, it's something we touched upon at the last meeting where we were taking grants and monies that we've had to make improvements on the arena 
Uh, and the second part of that plan is really an action plan to better service the community. And one of those things were possibly additional public skates, teen nights, things that we can engage the children more in that asset that we have. Uh, so that's definitely something we're going to be looking at. Thanks. Joe, Joe, is it uh, crazy to think that perhaps we could do something like the play it again type thing with the old skates? People give them in to the, to the rink. Uh, that would be hockey skates. I don't know what we would do about figure skates, but uh, is that a possibility we could do with the leagues? Yes. Maybe that's how we could build up a little reservoir of, uh, of uh, skates for the public skate, you know, the public skate session for people who don't have them. And, you know, maybe do it for free. I don't know. We'll also look for some, if there's any grants out there for some sort of sports activities that may, maybe we could apply for that we haven't hit before. But we'll, we'll look into seeing if there's any grants out there for that type of activity. Yeah, okay. Yes. Judy, right? We just met the other day. That's how I remember, right? Okay, that's good. Um, well, historical, so. Yep. Um, I'm really here to echo what Helen has said. Um, Just give, put your name on the record, please. Uh, Judy Vining, Long Beach Aware. Thank you. Um, we too exist on county funds and state funds and very little local funds. There are other communities, actually another city, our sister city, Glen Cove, does a lot of direct support for their not-profits. Um, not even going through the CD process, but Helen's correct. If we are putting money that geographically fit into your area to receive the funding, but the community is only allowed to use that facility four hours a week, I mean, somehow that doesn't seem like it's benefiting the whole community. So what is the benefit to the community of having the ice skating rink? Well, that's just, I think, public skating you're referring to right now, mm -hmm. right? But there's also uh, hockey leagues and, uh, I guess, hockey practices and things like mm -hmm. that that go on there as well. Oh, but, sure. but I agree. I think, we, I think we all agree that we need um, more sessions. Uh, I, I know I was a, a rink rat when I was a kid because I needed to get better at but skating. You could, but so you could get there, of, right? I mean, yeah. They were so there I, for you. I agree. We need, more, we need more of that. I agree. But we also need, in the not-for-profit sector, some public support that we know how to find grants. We don't need, I mean, it's nice, you can refer us to your grant writer, but we've all been down that road so many times, we could probably tell you where to find grants. Um, and that's really true. So the, but the small amount of money that we would, or used to be able to get from the CDC funds, gave us that little bit of a cushion a little bit more that we could not have to use our direct funding for or stuff that we couldn't use our direct funding for. Um, so I, I don't know that it's worth holding everything up for some months of negotiating, but you're asking the not-for-profits to wait two years. We'll try to fix that. I don't know how to do that, but we'll figure it out. Is there a way we could we could you know shorten that timeline? Well, we'll talk to the county again and see what we can do. All right. But it does have to go through the legislature. Huh. Good luck, right? Okay. Thank you. Patty, let's talk next next week and see how if there's ways to move money around in the in the budget afterwards. We we could talk. Right. Any other comments from the public? Oh, for skates and stuff. Yeah, that, that's certainly an idea. Um, I, I don't want to comment on that, so. 
Thank you. No other comments? We'll close that. Okay. Item five is a resolution authorizing transfer of funds for the 23-24 fiscal year. So I'm going to ask um, Ray to come up. This is really just moving money from um, an excess in the tax certiorari claims over to the judiciary claims line item. Um, 38500 moving from one line to the other. Yeah, that's correct, uh, Ray Flammer, tax assessor. Uh, so we are over budget this year with the small claims hearings, uh, the small claims assessment review hearings. Uh, we're about 38,000. A large part of that was because of the core calendar is still backlogged from COVID, where cases the year before that got, had decisions and reductions didn't make the final roll. So there was in a one year moratorium, about 25% of the reductions had to have two years of uh, refunds instead of having a moratorium. So, and we budget months before we actually get served petitions, so I don't even know uh, what petitions are coming in yet, or grievances in that fact, in that matter. Uh, so we're over by about 38,500, so this covers the full year. Uh, everything has to be paid out by June 1st, otherwise we uh, assume a 1% per month penalty on anything that isn't refunded. Comments from the council, Roy. Yeah, Ray, they, they, both both of these funds are actually tax search already. One is small claims, and one is the re regular court. That is correct. One's for the tax cert, one's for the scars. Why do they call it judiciary claims instead of, you know, tax search already claims? Uh, the judiciary, that was a budget code okay. that was there when I came in. Okay. So no, no, re that, yeah. it was there. It was there. Yes. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other comments from the council? Comments from the public? All right, thank you. We'll close that. Item six is also a resolution authorizing transfer of funds for the 23 24 fiscal year. This is also for the tax assessor's office. It's moving $6,600 from a consultant line item into machinery and equipment to um, purchase a new copy machine. Uh, with the upcoming upgrade of our software system, we plan on scanning a lot of documents. And our current copier scanner is about eight years old. It's approaching the end of its useful life. Uh, it j gets jammed a lot. It skips pages when I scan. Uh, the service guys come in, he's advised us to get a new copier. Uh, you can't really do anything about it. And this, I have some extra money right now in the consultant line. Uh, so I'd like to move money so I could get a copier so we could start scanning and start archiving some paper. Comments? Yeah, right. On, on this, the, what is our line for consultants for? Is that just for search already? Uh, that's okay. mostly for uh, get to get appraisals uh, for certiorari. Uh, had previous city managers wanted appraisals on properties. Uh, I've used it for an engineering report on the auxiliary building. It's right. you know, pretty for any report appraisal or. Okay, so basically appraisals. Yeah. Yeah. The um, actual copier, that's $8,000, but we're using 6000 Yes, I have uh, money in the line right now. Okay, and it does color too? The one, the new one will have color, the one I have doesn't. Uh, when I go to court, I'm bringing black and white copies of pictures, aerial photographs, color is a better presentation, hopefully a better outcome. And I, I guess, and, and I know I brought this up before, we have no fund for what we know is going to be obsolete. In other words, we don't put money aside to because we know a copy is eventually going to pass its useful life and we're going to get a new one. A lot of businesses lease these things and then they never have to go through the problem. They never have to come up with the money. Why don't we do that? Are you asking well, him or are you I was going to say that's probably... Well, well actually, Ina, Ina I, I can answer that. is a big leaser. Well, with the copiers, generally with, with the leases, they're usually a three-year lease. Um, our copiers, we tend to get higher use than average out of them. The copiers are usually designed to last about five years. 
we've been getting eight plus years out of them, and by purchasing it, we do save a lot more in the in the long run on on buying it outright than what we would cost us to lease well, the. Actual how much item. use do we actually get? How many uh, copies a month? I mean, that's how they judge copiers. Yeah. Uh, I don't have my stats with me on copies, but it's also our scanner as well. well and scanner that's, that's doesn't a big use problem is the scanning, and it's also our backup printer. Uh, something goes wrong with our printer. It but right now you have a service contract on this. Yeah. For how long? It for you know every fiscal year I get a new service contract. So. It never it's the same contract by upgrade. I put in a purchase order, so it continues. And what does the service contract cost us? It's like a little less than a penny a copy. So it's uh, just a, twenty-five dollars. It's, a it's eight, 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 eight tenths of a penny, eight yeah. point five tenths of a penny per copy. But and it scans are free, relatively speaking. Yeah. So wouldn't theoretically we never have to have a new copy if if we have a service contract based on a use? Um, the service guy came in, he couldn't fix the problem I have, so. They're no he longer goes. stocking parts on these so machines. The, the, so it's not really life. a service Could contract. Yeah, because they're, when they get, usually, generally when they get past five years, it becomes hit or miss if they're still gonna service them. We've gotten lucky on a lot of our equipment. Um, we've gotten, far past what is the expected life on, on these p pieces of equipment. But with the particular model that he has, uh, the Xerox machine he has right now, that those particular models are end of life and they're gonna be start it's stopping. Xerox or a copy? Xerox, Xerox, it is, no, it's, it's Xerox. Yeah, well. And um, they're gonna stop supporting it and we're not gonna be able to get parts for it. So they, they stopped the service contract after a They certain haven't point. yet, but I believe within the, within the next go around, they're not gonna renew it. So we still have a service contract on this, the one we have right now? That's correct. And they're not servicing it? Uh, they are, but there's certain things they can't fix, like... That's, then they're scanner. not servicing it. If they can't fix it, they're not yeah. servicing it. All right, thank you. You're Any comments from the public? All right, thank you. Okay. We'll close that. M7 is resolution authorizing amendments to the urban development fund budget for the years 2014 through 2023. So I'll bring up Patty and Tyler again for this one. Um, this is just what was just mentioned, um, authorizing the amendments to the budget for the uh, urban development funds for 2014 to 23. Um, basically, there was, a lot, there was a lot of unspent money in certain line items, and this is basically moving it to where we have documentation so we could draw the funds down and then... Um, clean it up uh, into the uh, ongoing years, 21, 22, 23. Thank you. So I was, I was saying the um, seven acres that the city owns where Stop and Shop is, is leased under a 99-year lease. We acquired the land back in the 1980s through a federal HUD grant called an Urban Development Action Grant, or UDAG program. The funds are used consistent with HUD guidelines as per our auditors. The funds meaning the lease payments that we get and the annual rental payment currently is $102,399.96. And it goes up very slowly on a prearranged schedule based upon the agreement we have with Stop and Shop Realty. So the funds can be used anything consistent with general HUD guidelines. And Tyler will explain the two elements. Uh, so there's two parts to this resolution. The first part is just a transfer of funds uh, for the exis existing budgeted years, which would be the 2014 to 2020. Um, these are all transfers being done at the suggestion of the, uh, the city comptroller. This is just general housekeeping, cleaning up the lines, 
Uh, there's some negative balances on some of the lines, so those lines are being closed out and cleaned up. And uh, the second piece of this resolution is the budget for the new funding years that have not been budgeted for yet, and that would be the, the 2021 to 2023 urban development years. And uh, the intention here is to use those that funding for these new years um, for uh, to, to cover city staff full-time salaries. Thank you. Comments from the council. Uh, Patty, the, the funding is going to be used, uh, 102, I, I see here, for regular salaries. Can you, uh, you know, I know Tyler just said for staffing, but could you explain what the, the actual salaries are? I mean, who is that paying for? Sure. Um, some of the money is going to support our youth and family staff who are now part of the recreation department under Joe Brand. So, and, yes. so part of this 102 is going to the recreation department. Right, for one year, yes. We paid for the salaries for youth and family for last year, for this current year. Well, you have it, all right, it, it's only the 23. All right, so the 21, you spent 102, you know, you spent the entire amount on salaries. What was that? What, that was not, that was youth and family at that time? You're talking about the, the 2021 fiscal year? I mean, 2021, year? yes. So actually, That's the first year that you have, you spending this on it, salaries. The, the, the three years in total are covering a uh, portion of youth and family staff and community development staff for the fiscal for the current fiscal year all all those three funding years in total are being used to cover fiscal year the current fiscal year salaries only the three years is only used to cover one year salary is that what you're in saying in this case yes so we 327,000 is going to well no i'm sorry it's not it's 307 thousand is going to pay salaries for this year um, I think the number is more subtotal I don't know the exact number but it's going to be it's going to be I'm sorry so it's actually the, the urban development 2021 and the 2022 years the urban development 2023 still has additional funding, um, but that particular funding year is expected for uh, the, the following fiscal year. No. So I'm confused. So two, so two urban development years are being used to fund the current fiscal year. So, so 2021, you have down in the, the amended budget, the 102 for salaries, 2022, 102 for salaries, 2023, 102. But, uh, you know, you say that that total is being used for this year. The three years is being used. No? I'm so, yeah, I, let me refer. It's, it's two, two, two of the urban development years are being used to fund the current fiscal year salaries. Okay. And those are not youth and family services. It's recreation department. No, it is. It's community no. devel development staff and youth and family salaries for the current fiscal year. You, you don't have a breakdown of what, what goes into what, do you? I do, yeah. How yeah. much goes into recreation and how much goes into... Well, I would need a calculator. I, I mean, I have the All breakdown right. now. Okay. I can show it to no, you I after if you like. Later. All right. Thank you. Any other council comments? Comments from the public? James. James Hodge, 95 East Fulton Street, Long Beach, New York. Uh, very quickly, I didn't get up and really speak about, first of all, let me pay homage to my mother. This is Women's History Month, but every day was her month, and I pay homage and respect to all women for all of the great work you do. So thank you to all of you women. And uh, let me just say this. I didn't get up and speak 
uh, for the community development funds, but again, 70% of community development funds is supposed to benefit low to moderate income persons. Now also, when we talk about this and we're coming to speak about it, any question that the council have, I know you guys email prior to this, but that means every department that is coming to speak about this, it should be information. It shouldn't be, I don't know, I think, and all of that stuff. When it comes to urban development funds, <clears throat> when Wall Bounds was built and the Urban Development Housing Authority project, housing project from the United States government, they knocked down tons of homes, kicked people out, eminent domain, and they made a 99-year deal to that community that the eight blocks that this particular funding and this project uh, affected, that money will be put back into the immediate community. That, that was in the deal. You look at it. And so when there's questions about 2021 budget and 2022, well, you know, Roy, you was here, and this is for every administration. When you have non-for-profits that are breaking their neck, trying to get every dime to do everything they can for the least among us or different issues like Judy uh, Vinen do such a great job for underage drinking and drug use and all of the different things. When you have organ monies like this that can benefit the Martin Luther King Center during the pandemic, we struggled for every dime feeding over hundreds, 300 people a day. And then you have money sitting in budgets that's supposed to benefit communities like this, and it sit there. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, we don't know what salary, whose salary is going to. This money is supposed to benefit the least among us, 70 or more percent. Urban development has different mechanisms and processes, how it goes together. Community development funds have what it has. It's good that we have different people on different things, right, when you get in, it's good that, you know, you're a hockey coach. The ice ring is getting a hundred and something thousand of those dollars to fix it up. You know, <clears throat> it is surrounded around millionaires and million dollar homes, but yet it's in the boundary of community development. So a hundred and something thousand dollars go to that. The MLK is hurting. It needs funds. It needs children with after school programs. Computer need to be fixed. I care about the whole city. When John White was here, we did programs in the West End, in the West End, you know, for his organization, Project Challenge. And so I finished by saying that yet we say, and I know you asked, uh, uh, President, you asked Patty, can we do something about it? And she said, well, we already did it. How could you have already did it? And you present the budget tonight to vote on. So it is not done. And my thing is, if you can do it, and I thank you for asking these questions, because it seemed like with all of this money left, it wasn't asked before. Thank you for saying, can some money go to non-for-profits? I appreciate it. I don't care what party you're in. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. And when there's money that's supposed to benefit people because you're showing a poor population and people that need, and then you go elsewhere with the money, it is not fair and it is not right. Help the people that need the help the most. Your Thank que you. Your questions are, are, are they're, they're good questions, and, and we agree with that. Yeah, you're uh, doing you know, something about I, it. I think that they did explain the salaries, and they do have the answers to some of, some of those questions. So it's not like they didn't come prepared and they didn't have the information. But some of the questions are policy that they don't decide that we need to decide. And you're right. Well, policy, you guys decide. But if they're the ones that put the budget together, they're the ones that put no, the I, budget I'm, together I'm with not, the input of you guys. I I'm not disagreeing with you on yeah. this. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. But what I'm saying is they don't have the decision-making process in there. So we can't lay it on them. But we do have to bring it to the county. And that's one of the, one of the hurdles that we have well, to deal I, with. Well, the next hearing in the county is May what? When is the next hearing in the county that you guys have to present there? Because maybe I'll be at that meeting. When is the next day that you guys will be presenting over there? The county? Uh, May. The, the, sorry. The county, the county has a second public hearing. May 24th? I don't know the date. They haven't told us a specific date. We had one public it's, hearing. Okay. But... Um, it's already there. It's on the so, calendar. So we're, we're going to, we'll, we'll, we'll address this issue. Okay. All right. Okay. Because, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll call Denise Ford or call the, the county legislator. But my I'm thing is. she's not here. Uh, well, it's, it's just that please make sure $1,000 or 500 can we'll do so much 
for a community organization, please. Understood. Yeah, we, we do understand it. We've been talking with Denise as well, who we, who we hired for this reason, to help with Patty's group, um, specifically to look at how these monies can be spent and um, what help we can get from the county and everything, because she knows the process. And she's been a great hire, and I think she has a lot of great ideas for this reason. Thank you for good. what you're doing with the money, the fire department and other things, but please, please, there's organizations Understood. that can really Thank you. If I um, could provide a little clarification, I did a quick run on the numbers for urban development. And we're talking, as Tyler said, of two years of funding, paying for uh, one of the years, about half the money would go for youth and family staff that are part of the recreation department, that particular unit of folks. And the other half of the money pays for the community development staff salaries. Thank you. And um, if I may also say that the 70% that Mr. Hodge mentioned uh, benefiting low and moderate income, that's uh, part of the requirements, because we did a little research today, for the urban consortium, which is the Nassau County Urban Consortium, of which we're a part of. Their money, they have to make sure to report to HUD that 70% of the money goes for that purpose. I'm just saying that's what's in the requirements. Um, in terms of um, the UDAG, or Urban Development Funds, the funds were provided to the city under that program back in the 80s, not for community development purposes, but specifically to create jobs and stimulate the economy at a time with very high interest rates, very high unemployment. And the goal of the funds coming back to us, because the city set up us, they didn't give away the property to stop and shop. They leased it, therefore we get this income. And the goals for the income are to benefit the community for general HUD purposes, not specifically community development purposes. And I, if I may say one other thing too, that having worked in relocation under HUD requirements, where, and I wasn't here of course, but when those businesses and homeowners were relocated under HUD guidelines, there were specific requirements for relocation costs. They were moving how, and for fixtures, if it was a business, and for the cost of re-putting in the business. I've done this in other communities, and it's very, um, um, very specific and a very specific requirement. And it can cost a lot. It may not cost a lot, but there was significant money, I am sure. And when I did research, as I think I've mentioned before, back uh, to the city council minutes and agendas from the 1980s to research this issue if there were any comments through the agendas or through the minutes committing the fund, the urban development funds coming in through the lease. I could not find anything. I looked through corporation council's uh, files before you were here, Dennis. <laughs> um, and I could not find anything referencing that. The only thing I saw, honestly, in the agendas were a couple of resolutions to do with paying for um, costs for relocation, as I just mentioned, because that was a requirement. It was paid for out of the grant, not city, but it had to be approved by the city council at the time. Patty, thank you, because there's a lot of confusion about this, what that urban development money was what is and was for, and the actual deal that we got. And Ray, correct me if I'm wrong, but we don't collect any tax on that, right? No, we do. We do. Full tax. Um, they pay full taxes. Oh, they pay full yeah. tax for six acres? Seven. Seven yeah. acres, yeah. So regardless of, they, if they had kept, if they didn't lease that property, they would still be paying the same amount? If it were... You know, if it were commercial property, it would be, they're, they're not getting any tax break? If that came off the lease tomorrow, we would still be collecting the same amount of money? Yes. Yeah, outside of the no lease? There's no exemptions on the property. It's fully valued. Oh, uh, okay. The parent company of Stop and Shop uh, pays taxes every year. Okay. All right. That was another misunderstanding that's around. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comment? Comment from the public. Good evening again, gentlemen. Crystal Lake. Back in the 80s, it was East Chester Street and Park Avenue that were gentrified. 
via eminent domain. Section block and lot 5996210. If you review the property view card, you will see all the mom and pop stores along Park Avenue, which at that time also had the above rental properties. Okay, however, behind the mom and pop stores were homes. The homes, home, home ownership and rental properties, they were taken, just taken via eminent domain. Many of the individuals did not even understand what they were signing to obtain the relocation funds. Some didn't even receive it. However, unfortunately, due to that gentrification, okay, there was supposed to be some community benefit because of the gentrification, which of course serves the greater good. However, many individuals lost their homes. In addition to that, the property setback, okay, didn't have to go back that far, unfortunately. Okay, where the curves, where the parking is, that section did not have to go back that far. There was, there's ample parking you can see on the right-hand side. So that was unfortunately intentional for whatever reasons I will not get into at this time. However, there should be additional, and, and let me just take a step back. Why are there so many years of the excess unused funds? They should be utilized in a timely manner for its initial intent. Um, we've all understand that funds are available with the initial intentions of being utilized here, there, or wherever, and that may not occur for whatever reasons. But moving forward, I would hope, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but there's room for improvement. Okay, we're talking, what, seven, eight years of unused funds? I wish I had a bank account like that. Me too. Okay, too. so, you know, I think that there's much room for improvement. Uh, there's senior programs, there's youth programs, there are the non-for-profits, uh, the 5013Cs. There are many entities that would be in need and the services would actually benefit the city of Long Beach as a whole. So moving forward, I hope money just doesn't sit. I mean, I worked in with, with numbers. Mine were on the, on the penny, to the I, penny. I agree with you. Okay. All right, thank you. That's how it's done. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Okay, we'll close it. Okay, item number eight is a resolution adopting the City of Long Beach program for public information. So, um, Long Beach participates in the National Flood Insurance Program and the Community Rating System. We're currently a Class 7 rating, which gives um, uh, residents of Long Beach a 15% reduction in their flood insurance. Um, this resolution is to adopt a public information uh, program for public information, which gives us additional points, which may be able to get us into a class six rate, rating that will reduce um, flood insurance premiums by up to 20%. I'd like to comment that the, um, the team in, in the city hall, uh, Joe Fabrizio, Scott Kemmins, uh, other group, have done an amazing job in getting this program certified. 20% um, is, is a significant reduction. I think we're one of the only communities that make that rating. Um, I believe we're one of the only communities that make the 15% rating. Um, and to make a 20% rating is really quite an achievement. I'd like to uh, congratulate them on such a good job. I think this is a great, a great thing for the community. And Joe is, Joe is here if we have any questions. Comments? Council? Yeah, if, if just some broad strokes on the plan and what needs to be done to fulfill this requirement? Uh, good evening, Joe Fabrizio, Commissioner of Public Works. 
Um, yes, I, I just want to expand on, on what Dan said. That was an excellent summary. Um, the city is a class seven community right now in this community rating system program. So that means Long Beach residents enjoy a 15% reduction in their flood insurance. So if you pay $5,000 a year right now, you know, you're saving $750. Our goal is to, um, our immediate goal, quite honestly, is to get to a class six community. So over the last year, we've done three things so far that's going to hope, hope, get us to that goal. One, we increased the free board requirement from two to elevation three um, via council resolution. We also, via council resolution, increased the proposed bulkhead height in the city of Long Beach from, to the BFE, which is the base flood elevation. And number three, we adopted a floodplain management plan. Now this step number four is likely to get us to the promised land. And step four is the adoption of the program for public information. And basically what it does, it's a function of public relations for the most part. Basically, it's committing the city to about 15 public outreach projects that most of them of which we do already. I'll give you a couple of examples. We send out an annual flood awareness bulletin. We send out a, uh, we do storm drain markers. We put markers saying no, no dumping drains to the bay. Um, we're gonna be putting um, a QR code at four locations in the city. So if you click on that QR code, um, it'll go to a, a website that shows you um, how to mitigate um, flood reduction. We, um, in the billing department, they maintain records of people who come in and look, want to look at the flood plain maps. We plot repetitive lost properties. That's people who have had multiple um, losses in the city of Long Beach. So there's a whole myriad of things that we do. So this is kind of formalizing the list of um, public outreach projects that we're going to be committing to. And I've and I again I have to thank um, John McNally in public relations, Kerry Troy um, in uh, in events because really a lot of this falls, the burden falls on them to do a lot of these PR type activities. And of course the building department, you know, um, we wouldn't have the program if it wasn't for Rich Hsu, who um, has to maintain all elevation certificates. Um, so it's a real plus all the way around. If we do achieve this 20% reduction, again, um, that's automatic on your flood insurance premiums. If your bill was 5,000, now you'd be saving 1,000 instead of 750. So this program saves, you know, millions of dollars annually for the city. And I actually have that breakdown in my office. I forgot to bring it. It's called the what if statement. And it basically shows you the policy premiums in the city and how much is actually saved through the program. And I'd love to get that for you so you could see that as well. Thank you, Joe. Thank You're you, welcome. Sir. Comments? Questions? Joe, how long do you expect this to take until we see the effect? Um, what we're gonna do is we, we're gonna request a, um, it's like a mid-year review. If it, we have to have this, hopefully this passes first, then I have to request a mid-year review, and then I'll have a meeting with, um, it's called the Insurance Services Office, um, and then we'll present all the new information that we have, and I, I don't know how long it'll take, six months to a year, most so likely. So next year, I'll have the 5% less? I hope so. That, that's the goal. I mean, again, we're one of the few communities, the only ones, I think, from my knowledge, that participate in right now in Long Island is Freeport, Southampton, um, and the city of Long Beach. Nobody takes advantage of this program. Um, it's a great program. Most people don't even know what it is. Um, yeah, well, I, I have to say something. I see Liz back there, and Liz, this is one of Liz's pet projects, and she always was screaming at people, make sure you check your flood bill. Make sure you get this, this yes. discount. And she know. did call me earlier today, so yes, I spoke to her. And, uh, <laughs> And I, well, she's because crossing of that, her fingers. I, I checked my bill, but I was getting it. <laughs> You're getting no. Every, you, it should be automatic. You should, if you check your flood insurance, yeah. and you, and if and you only, if you don't have a mortgage, you um, don't have to have flood insurance. But most people have a mortgage, so if you have a mortgage, you have flood insurance. It's an automatic. If you deduction. don't have a mortgage, you're silly not to have flood insurance. There are you live here. Some, yeah. There are some people, unfortunately. My mom is one of them. Um, after Sandy, she didn't. She owned her house and she didn't have flood insurance, and she ended up paying like forty, fifty thousand dollars for her. Uh, basement flooding. <laughs> so there are a few out there, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah but she but, may never have flooded before, right? She never did. Uh, yeah. That's why I she never, I never did, did either. But Yeah, my mom's yeah. 87, and she still lives in the same house on, right. on market, and uh, she never flooded, so she didn't think right. she needed it. Now now she has it. Yes. You know, oh, well. so. <laughs> Any questions? So we're looking to go from class 7 to class 6. What is the highest rating you can get? Oh, I have to look at it. It definitely goes down to a five, which is a 25%, but I don't know how low it actually goes. Like, I don't know if it goes four, three, two, one. I'd have to look. Is it a one? And what would that be? I guess it would be... Mount Everest. Like 40, yeah, you know, it gets really difficult, the, 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 the amount of activities you have to do as you... 
kind of go down the list. Um, so right now our goal is the 20, and then if we get that, we'll, we'll keep going. Okay. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take any more. Comments from the public? Kevin O'Reilly from uh, Long Beach Barn Street. I am a member of the Long Beach Co-Ad, one of the board of directors, as well as the vice president of the Northeast Bay Canal and Civic Association. Uh, and I cannot speak to how great the city has been, <clears throat> excuse me, I have to speak to how great everyone in the city has been working on this. I've been part of the committee since it started. And it has, the, uh, the detail that goes into the records that they produce, the amount of effort that the city is doing to save this money for our re uh, residents is fantastic. So I want to thank this uh, council, previous ones who started it, and hopefully we can continue it. It is a great program, and I hope that uh, this resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Liz? Thank you so much. I just wanted to say a, a huge thank you to everyone that has assisted in making this possible. I'm, for those of you that are new on the board, you really need to um, emphasize to your executive staff how amazing they are. This project, I don't know if you've seen the paperwork that's involved, is at least three volumes, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. And I would highly suggest that you read the 600 page CRS manual in all of the many, many papers that you get so you do have an understanding of exactly all the work that goes into this. The work that goes into this is at least three, three full-time employees for an entire year. Richie Shu and I are the only floodplain managers downstate. And I just want to bring your attention to the draft. There's just a couple of grammatical things. But because it's a draft, I'm not going to get uh, too particular. But on uh, is OP4, City Manager's Report, for your CRS messages. Uh, just number three, make a plan and practice your plan. It says prepare, prepare a go bag. It should be prepare a to-go bag. Then the next sentence, be aware. Be aware of what? Um, then the rest of the stuff is just copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, number six, don't dump in the storm drains, beaches, canals. Is there something that we can put in there about the fines for dumping and who would be enforcing those? Otherwise, again, thank you very much. And I hope that we get 20% sooner than later. Please check your flood That'll declaration page. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Thank, thank you, Liz. I appreciate all your work on this, too. I will make any of those corrections. And, it, and th there's, a, there's um, provisions in the code to enforce, like dumping in the drains and so forth. There's provisions in there to address that. That can be enforced by the police, by the building department. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Thank you, Liz. Any other comments from the public? Okay, we'll close that. Okay, item nine is a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase license plate reader equipment under New York State contract. So I have our acting um, police commissioner, Rich DePalma, here to answer any questions. As mentioned, this is for purchasing license plate readers. Um, for exiting the city, I believe, on this one. Um, 67,000 total, of which 50,000 will be used from a grant award. 
Hi, Richard Palmer, Acting Police Commissioner. Yes, uh, this grant uh, is going to increase our plate reader coverage uh, throughout the city. Uh, it's an invaluable tool to the police department. It helps our detective division out. It, take, it helps our patrol division out. Uh, we've been able to, uh, you know, do some good enforcement with this and, uh, and keep the community safe. Uh, the company we're using, um, LSAG, now called Celex, is a company we've been using since uh, 2007. Um, we started our Ring of Steel here in Long Beach in 2015, and this additional coverage will help us uh, fill up some gaps in that Ring of Steel. Thank you. Rich, I, uh, sorry. That wasn't a comment. What? I oh. sneezed. Oh. Bless you. It sure sounded like it. <laughs> yeah, Rich, I, I know I had asked you this before, but just for the public, what's the yearly cost of this? $12,000. 12000 Annual cost, yes. And does it, this, what we buy, what's the useful life? Any idea? Uh, right now, we've, we've purchased equipment. We've, we've made some re repairs, but we've uh, purchased this equipment back in 2015, and uh, it's still going strong. We're still, we're still, we're still getting good results so with it. Does so. it come with any guarantee, or, or does the twelve thousand cover a service contract? Or yeah, the twelve thousand covers a service contract. So oh, okay. Yeah, they will, they will make All the right, Thank you. Any other comments? Comments from the public? I will close that. Thank, you. thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Item ten is a resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a charitable donation, and I believe we have a motion on this item. Yeah. Is number 10? Yes. Yeah. We have to uh, strike the word volunteer from the uh, first paragraph. And, and, and in the resolved, we'll strike the word volunteer as well. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Voting, Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Okay, continue. So just so you know, that uh, we have uh, Commissioner Miller here if you need. This is basically to accept um, a donation of two um, Sea Dew jet skis uh, to the city of Long Beach for the fire department. So, so if you have any questions, I'll have Joe answer. But Any questions from the council? I just, when we struck the volunteers, you want to know how fast it goes, right? What? The jet ski. <laughs> and it comes with a warranty. <laughs> yeah. um, is it for both departments or is it just for the paid department? So, so I'll, I'll always say this. We have one fire department uh, that's comprised of both volunteer and paid. So that's why we struck out the volunteer. Okay, it's, it's so it goes for department. both departments. Yes. Okay. And I see Carrie here, and Carrie happens to be an expert on this type of stuff. So you'll teach him, right? <laughs> Any other comments from the council? Comments from the public? Eileen? Eileen Hesh in Long Beach. Maybe I just didn't hear it, but I wanted to thank Dr. Pamela Banks for donating it. Absolutely. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Uh, Mike Delory, Long Beach. Um, good evening. Uh, is Dr. Pamela Banks here? If she is, please stand up. Um, and the only other suggestion is um, when an event like this happens, if you might want to reallocate um, this particular item to the beginning of the agenda and rather have people wait around for two hours. Um, it's just out of a thought, uh, that's all. And um, I will reserve my future comment. Oh, last question. It says Long Beach Fire Department is who the donation is going to. Yes. 
do we have an idea, since um, lifeguards use jet skis, is this exclusive to the, and I, you may not know the answer to this, is it exclusive to the use of the fire department only, or can one or both be used on the beach uh, during the beach hours when the lifeguards are on duty, or does it have to be housed in a different location and only brought out when there are emergencies? Where the, that's my only question. I certainly don't have the answer, Mike, but uh, Joe probably does. Um, how they use the, uh, the jet skis. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, Joseph Miller. Uh, just to answer Mike's question, the uh, lifeguards have three jet skis. They're ready to deploy on the beach. We currently, uh, the fire department, have two, one of them being a 2007 jet ski and the other one a 17. This donation by Ms. Banks Davis will help us definitely provide a greater service to the fire department side where we cover not just the beach, the bay, mutual aid, uh, to the back bays, to the Coast Guard. So we're all over with it. Um, hope that answers the question. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Yes. Uh, James, I just wanted to quickly stand up and thank uh, Dr. Banks for your wonderful, let's give her another round of applause. Thank you for your donation here in our great city by the sea, surrounded by the sea, so the jet skis come in to a lot of help. Uh, I know we're striking volunteer and all that. And I don't think we have to strike it sometimes. Our volunteers are amazing, just like our volunteers auxiliary. Yes, I just meant cross it out, that's oh, all. Okay. Yeah, sorry. All right, let me reclaim my time. That's five seconds he took. Uh, so when I say like the volunteer auxiliary police officers that I was a part of for several years, uh, volunteers, they volunteer their time. We know we have one department paid and volunteer, but if someone sees the volunteers and they want to give a donation to the volunteers, it's not the, like the volunteers going to say, oh, it's an emergency, you can't use it. You know, so if someone has an issue or problem because it is a donation that someone sees the, 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 the great work that the whole fire department do, and they're saying, I want to give it to the volunteer department. The, it's a department. They're not like they're going to say, oh, no, it's only ours. You can't use it on the rescue. So if someone is donating it to the volunteer department, we know that they will, listen, the, the chief back there, is, you know, the dog catcher. If the dog catcher need to rescue a dog out there, they'll probably let him use the jet ski. So, again, let us, again, I appreciate Dr. Banks. And, I like, he was saying when, when some people come to volunteer, it would be great if they can go early. But I am always truly honored when someone can dig in their pocket and donate to our volunteer departments, whether it's auxiliary, whether it's uh, the fire department. But again, this was a donation, from my understanding, to the volunteer department, and again, by way of it being a part of the whole department. But I don't think we necessarily had to strike this or strike that, uh, because our volunteers, we appreciate them giving their dedicated volunteer services. As we all run out, they run in. And so again, thank you, volunteers. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, paid, and thank the whole department. And again, thank you, Dr. Banks. Thank you, James. Sometimes we get caught up in the semantics of the writing, and that, I was just trying, semantics, right? So I, and I wanted to wait to the end of this, but thank you very much for, for the donation of the jet skis. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. In, incredibly generous donation from Dr. Banks. Thank you. We'll close it out then. Okay, item number 11 is approval of minutes of prior meeting, March 5th, 2024. Do I have a motion? I'll do. Second? Second. Voting, Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Okay, and finally, item number 12 is a resolution authorizing transfer of funds for the 23-24 fiscal year. So this is just a movement of uh, $5,000 into temporary salaries to cover um, an employee on leave. 
Comments from the council? Comments from the public? Okay, on okay. to voting. Yeah. So item one is a local law amending the charter of the city of Long Beach regarding miscellaneous provisions. We introduce and move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I, I will. will. Sorry, John. It doesn't matter. Voting. Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Item two is an ordinance to amend the code of ordinances of the city of Long Beach regarding various boards and commissions. We introduce and move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? Second. Voting. Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Item four is a resolution authorizing budget amendments to the Community Development Fund for the 48th program year. I want you to just move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. Voting. Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Item five is a resolution authorizing transfer of funds for the 23-24 fiscal year. I want you to just move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. Voting. Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Item six is a resolution authorizing transfer of funds for the 23-24 fiscal year. I want you to just move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? Second. Voting. Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. No. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Item seven is a resolution authorizing amendments to the Urban Development Fund for the budget years 2014 through 2023. Who wants to just move the adoption of this item? I will. Second? Second. I will. Voting. Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Item eight is a resolution adopting the City of Long Beach program for public information. Who wants to just move the adoption of this item? I will. Second? I will. Voting. Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Item nine is a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase license plate reader equipment under New York State contract. Who wants to just move the adoption of this item? I will. Second? I will. Voting. Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. Item 10 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a charitable donation. Who introduced and move the adoption of this item as amended? I will. Second? I will. Voting, Councilmember Bendo. I just want to thank Dr. Banks for her amazingly generous gift. You are saving lives, potentially. So thank you very much. Yes. Councilmember Lester. And I echo that. Thanks, Ms. Banks. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Thank you again. Uh, yes. President Finn. All the thanks come out now. <laughs> yes. Finally, item 12 is a resolution authorizing transfer of funds for the 23-24 fiscal year. Who introduced and moved the adoption of this item? I will. Second? I will. Voting, Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. President Finn. Yes. City Manager's monthly personnel report has been filed by the City Clerk, who will make a motion to close the meeting. I will. Second? I will. Voting, Councilmember Bendo. Yes. Councilmember Lester. Yes. Councilmember Reinhardt. Yes. Uh, President Finn. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, just before we start Good and Welfare, I just wanted to, I didn't want to speak out of turn before. Uh, we are purchasing some um, ice skates for the rink. Um, that's happening this year. And then also a comment was made about uh, some of the pro teams donating money. We still are involved with the Ranger organization. There's a great program called Junior Rangers. I used it because it's very expensive to be a hockey parent. I dread the day. But um, I love it. 
but it's an opportunity if you register for that you get free skates free equipment it's actually a great program uh, so if anybody has children that's interested in hockey uh, I definitely recommend it because it's an incredible program and it's an opportunity to get equipment that is usually very expensive at no cost. Thank you, Mike. Liz Treston. Thank you. If you just wait one second, Dave's going to end something to your Corp Council. Our Corp Council, City's Corp Council. Everybody stand by. Well, I'm going to talk about bus patrol or bus safety, the $250 tickets that people are getting. Um, we were told when we passed that resolution that we would ha get PSAs with the school and the city. Having now uh, returned to my old habits of driving on park, the anxiety of stopping on the one side of park as the bus is coming the other way, and I stop, and no one else stops, and I get the finger, and I and I can't return it because I require two hands to drive. So I'd like to know, as there is money in the funding, when we can work with the schools to see a PSA that it is the state law that s traffic is supposed to stop, even on the other side of Park Avenue. Or if the city could work with the school and have the buses that let the children off on Park Avenue off on another block because crossing park, which no one does 30 miles an hour but me, is, is very scary, especially when your, your children have their heads up looking at their cell phones as they're crossing six lanes of traffic going 60, 65 miles an hour at times. You can tell because now we have those little things to tell you how fast you're going. So, the, so that's my comment on that. Thank you. And my other question is for our city controller. Has the audited financials for June been put up on the portal and for June 23rd? And that's it. Someone take this away from me. Who's next date? Please. 
Hi, good evening, Kina Rasnik, City Controller. Uh, no, the audited financial statements have not been put on the portal yet. Uh, Bonadia were here a couple of meetings ago and they did the presentation. Uh, their audit includes actually several parts of which one single audit. There is one of the programs that they're wrapping up their audit and hopefully we'll have uh, everything put on portal sometimes this week. The financials are done and uh, they were presented here last month. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ina. Ronald Paganini. Uh, evening, Council. Good evening, Ron. And uh, City Council, Councilman, and uh, City Manager Creighton. Uh, I have a small package here for you that I wrote, and I want everyone to have it. I want all the councilmen to have it, and Mr. Creighton has it. But uh, one is the overtime list for 2023. I think everybody should be on the same team here. You know, and, and know everything that's going on. Years ago, nobody knew nothing. But I'm not blaming Mr. Creighton. He's a very busy man. But anyway, if they can take, take this, and I have a, uh, I wrote something of the powers of the city that you have. And I want you all to read this. Uh, and basically, see what it says. And... Uh, I have a couple of questions now. You can read it at your own time. I'm not going to make really questions on that. But when you have time, you can read it. But I have a, co I have a couple of quick questions. Now, last meeting, you had three firefighters going to the academy. I want to know if they were new hires or they were in the budget. That's my first question. You and the as, we, as you go through, or you want me to wait till the end? Uh, you can answer the people. So two of them were already on board as, as um, EMTs. The third was hired. The three went, but they were all in the budget. So we're still under the amount of firefighters that were in the budget. Right. There's uh, 25 men you got in the budget, you think? I believe we have a uh, total uh, 32. I got, I got to check. I believe it's 32. 32 fi paid firefighters? Uh, with, with paramedics. Oh, with the paramedics. EMTs. I'm sorry, with uh, EMTs. Well, I think it's, it's listed as paramedics. Yep, so 33, right? Okay. All right, so, I mean, <laughs> you know, we're getting to the, the, the budget soon. Everybody's getting nervous. You know, the, the, the council's doing great things. Even, you know, Mr. Bendo and company last year, they did good, a lot of good things. You know, but the bottom line is, is the taxes. And, you know, it's been going on for many years. It's, it's, you balance it on the, on the city's back, on the residents' back. You know, we can't take much anymore. Five more percent would be a 100% increase since 2012. It's unheard of. And I want you to look at the overtime. It's $5 million in overtime, close to it, in both years. And you'll see other departments on there who were totally abusing it. And of course, the paid firefighters broke the record, you know, with a million five plus, million and a half, and, and whatever. But I just don't get it. You know, I've been with the city many, many years. I knew budgets. I knew what we would spend. This is a revelation that started in 2018. I went back to 2014 on the budgets. How did it get that bad? Check it out. It was never. We're quadrupling in overtime, doubling in overtime. And, and, it's, and we have people like duplication of, of service. We got quadruplication of service in, in, in a way. You know what I mean? Over departments and this and that. But honestly, listen, I'm not going to get into too much. You guys got a lot of work to do. 
I'm not blaming anybody for that. You, you guys are out of it of what's happening. It's up to this new council. And I think, you know, Mr. Bendo and Mr. Lester, we have to do the best we can. People are going to get hurt. But, you know, I just hope we'll find out sooner or later. I'll be asking questions of how far we're going with the errata and all of that. But everybody's nervous. I don't think we could t take more than a 2-3% uh, at this, you know, we're done. Obviously, I mean, you know, I, I, I appreciate all your comments. And I'm here to reiterate that our eyes are on the prize. Dan is working hard. I know. And you know, know that. Yeah. Roy, Roy and John uh, are, are extremely uh, focused on the budget as well as Mike, Chris, and myself. That is our focus. I mean, we, we, there's a lot of other things on the plate, but that is our focus. I know. Listen, I, I know a lot that most people shouldn't know. <laughs> but I know you're trying right you know off the bat. what happens when you know too much, right? So I know. Yeah, right. But I just I appreciate what you're doing, and a lot of people are, are worried about the budget. But anyway, thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you very and, much. And read, you know, read yeah, that. You know, it's, I will. It's, it's, try thank to get you. together. Thanks. All right. And, Thank you. And Ron, Ron, I have to say one thing, and I, I'll deny saying it, but Dan has been phenomenal when it comes to this budget. You know, you know how cheap I am <laughs> on this stuff. <laughs> and Dan listens, and he looks for every penny, every penny. And, you know, I know I was hesitant <laughs> in the beginning, and he said, well, I have to prove myself. And he, so far, he's really been proving himself. And I... I'm hoping you'll be pleasantly surprised this uh, year. I, I have, I'm, I'm hoping. I, I yeah. hope so, too. And I think Dan's going to do it with the rest yeah. of these guys. I think you're really dedicated. And you're doing other great stuff. You know what I mean? But Thanks. Keep it up. Keep up the Thank good you. work. Thank, Thank you. you. He's working hard. So, Ron, I'll also say um, you, you'll know that my, my focus is entirely on this budget right now. And I will say... Um, I don't know if everybody in this room knows, we have an incredible team here um, that are really working hard with me as far as the, the management here to get this budget. I know that um, you know all of the five councilmen are, uh, would like to see a 0% tax increase, and we are doing everything in our power to make that happen. Um, we're very close, um, and we're still moving there, and um, I believe we'll get there. Uh, but we will we'll confirm that when, when the budget season's over. But we are doing everything we can, and I can tell you the team is really working hard on this. Uh, that's great news, Dan. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, guys. It's thank hard you. work, you know, but, but thank yeah. you. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Dan. Russell Blank. Russell Blank, 96 Wisconsin Street. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the traffic division. Um, unfortunately, there's quite a few people on my block who have decided that they want to make the sidewalk a parking lot. I um, want to thank, uh, I believe her name is uh, Jamie, and the entire staff of the tra traffic division. I've made a lot of enemies on my block, but, you know, um, young parents should be able to push their baby carts strollers down the sidewalk, not in the street on a one-way block. That's a 15-mile-per-hour zone, and they come zooming down the street at 45 miles an hour. I had an operation in July of 22 on my knee. I could barely walk with a cane. And I just got to the point where I said, you know what? There's no reason for that. So if I made enemies, so be it. But uh, I also want to thank Officer Primrose. Um, he has responded quite often to several people on my block who are irresponsible pet owners. And to see him be verbally abused and chastised by people who I guess think that they have a right to disturb the peace, uh, let their dogs create a nuisance on the block, it's just, uh, I shake my head. I'm coming from Freeport, I lived there for 40 years, I've been here for nine years. It, I'm in shock to see how some people uh, elevate their pets on their balconies, on chairs and uh, couches, and let them go off for hours and hours and hours and disturb uh, myself and other people on the block. But unfortunately, no one other than myself wants to speak up about that. But I want to give them credit for that. And uh, unfortunately, you know, I have an old saying about some people, they're just not right in the head. 
He tries to speak to them and reach them, along with the animal control officer. It might last for a couple of weeks. I don't want to name anybody on my block or give their addresses away, but they do not want to respect anybody because they don't have any self-respect. I've learned that in 64 years in my life. You know, if you don't have any self-respect, you're not going to respect anybody else's uh, quality of life issue. But I just want to give them uh, a shout out and say thank you for doing the best that they possibly can. And, you know, unfortunately, some of the police officers don't know what's going on. This dispute that I've had with one individual um, on my block, but um, they do, they have a tough job. They wear many hats, the police department. But um, don't know the name of the animal control officer. I forgot his name. He may have told me several times, but he has spoken to several of my neighbors, and most of them get it. But unfortunately, you have one or two people that don't get it. But uh, I also want to mention about um, when we get the storms, because I live on a very narrow one-way block. They did some work maybe about five years ago where they dug out maybe six inches off the curb and put the rocks in. When we get these floods, that's all going right down the sewer, you know? So the floods are amazing, but I want to thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you very much, and it's great to hear someone extolling the uh, virtues of our police department. I know we have a great police department here, and the animal control as well, so thank you very much. Thank you. Jennifer Serafin. Where have you been? Sorry. Hi, how are you? It's my notes. Okay, first I want to start off, can you hear me? I want to start off and say um, thank you for all the support and helping with the fight of the Rapid Act. And thank you for the great, uh, you were on the front page of the Herald. Oh, really? Yeah, you didn't see that? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so uh, then I really want to speak to Mr. Cohen. I want to thank you for the amazing, well-written letter that you finally wrote after me nagging you for five weeks. But I do want to start out with, when I came here right at the beginning, you told me I was wrong, that you could not write a letter. And I asked you to write that letter immediately after Town of Hempstead's motion and Pocklany's motion. So obviously, Long Beach could have had a motion. And why didn't we have a motion? Why? did not you and Wagner look into that? And why was it Town of Hempstead and why did we have to hire a lawyer to make that motion? Why are we constantly always having to beg and plead and it's always, we had to hire a lawyer. We're always doing it. We're always coming back. It's even back to with the whole home rule thing. We fought for two months, letters going back and forth, them fighting in Albany and if we didn't do all that, if we didn't hire Ben, they'd probably be digging up our streets right now because they had to get rid of Eli Ababato, whatever his name was. It's always constantly, and it's our tax dollars that pay everybody. And we're always fighting and fighting and fighting and begging. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate everything that everybody's done. And I, that letter was amazing, but that letter should have went out from the beginning. It should have been Long Beach City Council filing that motion. It shouldn't have been Town of Hempstead because guess what? They're still trying to go through Riverside. That's what this whole Rapid Act is about. And when you saw, I saw that letter that you wrote and Wagner wrote. It was incredible because you were appalled that Equinor is still saying, we want to get that beach. And, and did you see what their comeback was? And it's public, I can say it. Why did it take you so long? Why are you coming back now, five weeks later? They want to know, why are you, and that's what they were saying to the judges. Why is he coming now? Why didn't he say something five weeks ago? Yeah, but that, that was disingenuous on their part, I believe. It was, but why did it take five weeks? Why did it take five weeks? Why did you, you not understand, as a legal counsel, that there was a portion you could respond to and a portion you couldn't respond to? I mean, I'm just a flight attendant and I read documents from Bohm. I read the Article 7. I I'm not going to law school. I mean, and I'm understanding it. So I I'm not trying to pick on you or anything. I just want to know why all this goes on all the time. Uh, 
I mean, I don't want to get into a debate. The only thing I'll say is, you know, the, the initial assessment that we could not reply to their opposition was legally correct. Uh, we addressed the, rep the misrepresentations that they made to them, and when they refused to correct the record, we felt at that point that we were legally able to respond. So that was the assessment that we made. Okay, but in the beginning, why, why, wasn't, why wasn't the city of Long Beach the ones to stop Equinor in their tracks? Like, why are we always, like, on the tails? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's not for me to answer. Okay. Well, when this started, uh, Dennis was not the corporation counsel. Okay. You know, it began back in late February, early March. He was not the corporation counsel at that time. I'm not blaming, I'm not saying it's you, I'm saying all no. of it, the whole thing has just been, you know what I mean. Okay, well, I, I, there, there was confusion at that time about what, what was the, the, right, the right course to take. I mean, and as this is the first time this ever happened to Long Beach, you have to understand there, there's a learning curve on everything. Okay, so going forward, can we be, in the front of it instead of the back of it going forward. Yeah. I mean, I think I mean we, we want to be, that's for sure. I mean, I think we really need to be because if this this whole rapid act hap I mean, we uh, really need to be on top of it. Well, we have to educate the rest of the uh, town. But thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate, I appreciate it. it. James Hodge. Is a hat trick for you tonight? James Hodge, 95 East Fulton Street. Just wanted to again thank uh, Dr. Banks for the amazing donation. I can't thank uh, volunteers enough that decide to give. Uh, as I was a chairperson of a nonprofit here in town and uh, for 10 years and on the board for 16 years and on plenty of other boards, it's always honorable for people to give of their time and donations and gifts, whatever it may be, to help others out. So again, thank you, Dr. Banks. Also, again, wanted to thank uh, women for their great contribution in history. Uh, again, being able to vote since 1920. Uh, and uh, I just thank God for, for women. Thank God for my mother who's, who's in heaven, my grandmother and great-grandmother. And when I think about it, you know, women couldn't vote for all of these years, you know, men made a decision that women couldn't vote. Like, their voice was all right at home, but they couldn't vote. And so I'm so grateful for all of the accomplishments that women fight for, equal pay, and just so many things, doing some of the same work, getting less paid just because they're ladies. So I say to the city, continue to diversify with different women in different places. Uh, all of this kind of look the same up here but make sure the departments uh, reflect our whole city. And also, when we talk about, and I make this personal, when we talk about urban development and community development funding, again, we had six, it says, from 2014 or 2015 till now, we're shifting money over to spend it now. And I'm not blaming you, but I'm saying that you guys are doing it now. I've never seen that report. I've never seen that. And I don't, if you look at the records, I don't know if they ever put that report on here on where money from urban development was going. So thank you for what you are doing. And again, I make it personal when money comes into the city for a certain cause. Let's say it comes in for the skate ring and then we put it on this side or we wait and then we say, okay, we didn't spend it this year. So now we got to lump it up with this money and we'll give it over here to this project or that project. Money comes in for poor people and low to modern income families in the city of Long Beach. It's not a color, but it's because of, again, low income to moderate income families. And, and we then spend it on different projects that don't really meet the qualifications, but they're somewhat in the boundaries. And I say for all of those years, almost nine years, money set, when we know so many other organizations need that money to help with vital services in this city, the better our non-for-profits are, the better our cities are. They're taking care of so many of even our family members, and some of us have benefited. I've benefited from the Martin Luther King Center as a child. My mother couldn't help me with the homework. My father couldn't help me with the homework. 
So when I speak about those monies, I know the impact of every dime and every dollar when it comes to meals, when it comes to staff. Please make sure monies that we are getting that you voted on the budget tonight, make sure it's going where you guys set out for it to go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mike Delory. Uh, good evening, Council Members. Mike Delory, Long Beach. Um, just what I'm about to uh, ask for is a establishing of a planning board and commission. It's my belief that, uh, let me just backtrack. What you see in front of you is the adopted comprehensive plan adopted last year. It's about three or four hundred pages. I imagine I just cut to the chase and mentioned on page 4-8, uh, it's create a planning board slash commission with clearly defined roles and responsibilities. Um, you don't have to recreate the wheel on this. And uh, I think City Manager Creighton of everybody here is probably the most... Uh, knowledgeable having been a member of the zoning board and these applications one of which thank you um, for the information tonight uh, Brandon about the the delay or the rescheduling of a, a hearing that's for Thursday night I believe that any change of use application as well as any mixed use renovation really needs to be set before a planning board slash commission with authority and teeth that you don't have to go to a zoning board hearing and sit there for five or six hours just to get you know your 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 word across. It also it drags people out to the public meeting room and you're just waiting, waiting. So I may get a little emotional because this is something I've been fighting for for years. Um, and you have a planning advisory board currently that doesn't have any authority to hold meetings and questions. So you have Franklin, this is on the list by the way. You have Franklin Alvarado, Steve Candid, Jason Clancy, Vincent De Pasquale, who I think was elevated or appointed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. Catherine DeMondra, Patrick Gallagher, Michael Negri, Tyrone Nurse, Jackie Odom, listed as an honorary member, Pearl Polite, Eric Sackler, and last, but certainly not least, because he's probably the, of all of them, the, in my opinion, the brightest, Damien Chiano. So, I don't know how to strongly request this other than what I've just seen recently of the uh, certain applications to the zoning board. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Mike. Uh, as, as you know, we've had personal conversations about this, and it was what animated me to run for city council. That, thank, that, thank that's you. my main issue, and we've talked about it. Um, we are in the process of implementing this planning board, which is not to be confused with the planning commission board that you just, uh, you just talked about. Okay. And as you know, this will be dealing with codes, zones, zoning, and it will have, I'll use the word, it will, it, it will have some teeth to it, some authoritative teeth that will, as you just said as well, is going to be another step in the process, a, a very important step. Um, we had a meeting uh, uh, two weeks ago uh, in regards to this. It was a very productive meeting. It was the first step. Um, 
Dan, Dan will speak about it for a moment. Scott, would you mind, uh, would you be able to come up as well? Th thank you. Dan? So, so let me start. I, I think this is probably one of the most important boards that we could develop in the city. Right now we have a zoning board and we have a planning advisory committee. We do not have a planning board. Um, I think it's one of the biggest problems in the city. Because in all honesty, sending the multi-use family dwellings to a zoning board prior to having an idea of whether it actually fits into the city's overall view of what they want developed or not developed in the city um, is a problem. And I don't, think it's, I don't think it's how we want to develop the city. Um, so right now what we're doing is trying to fill up the planning advisory board with the intent of really setting up a planning board. Um, in order to do that, we need real guidelines and rules that are set up in a way that will prevent us from getting Article 78 lawsuits all the time from, from um, developers. Um, so this is actually something that I've made a priority for Patty, um, who is our planning and economic development director, but I want her focus to be on planning, not on ne necessarily economic development, until we get this planning board in set up and, um, and in place. Uh, like I said, I think it's truly important. I think planning belongs at a planning board, not at a zoning board. Um, and I do think it is probably the most important thing to get done in order to implement that comprehensive plan. So. Thank you, Dan. And you're right, Mike. This, this is, I think, one of the most uh, important, almost existential issues for Long Beach. Um, and if you don't mind, I'd like to have Scott, yeah, uh, Scott Kemmins, but yeah. you, you, sp you speak too. I'm, I'm not... Um, because Scott has been instrumental in, in making this thing happen. You know, as President Finn said, he approached me uh, probably right after the election, and that was one of their highest priorities was to start a, a planning board or a planning commission. Uh, what the exact title is going to be, you know, that was actually just going back and forth, whether it be a board or a commission. Uh, Patty Bourne has been instrumental. Uh, she's reached out to some... Uh, experts in this they've made a proposal to the city on helping us set this up it, it is a priority it's been needed for a long time you know i always tell people my job's easy i write the letter that says no but as dan said and dan was on the zoning board for several years a lot of the stuff that's decided at the zoning board level is not really their function it's the function of a planning board and as our plan sets forth, as, as you brought to light, it calls for us to have that step. And it become now a two-step project uh, process for a large project like that to get done. And it can be much more properly vetted that it's going to fit into our community. It's what we need. And it will benefit our residents and not have a negative impact on our community. So I, I think, you know, we're working forward. I mean, we're trying to do it as quickly as possible. And I'm hoping in the near future we'll be talking about appointing members to the, the planning board. Thank you, Scott. And it's in the charter for a long time. <laughs> no, I, I, I yeah, know right. I, I knew I you knew that. that. Yeah, right. Um, but thank you for mentioning that. I, I'm, I'm going to end it by this. Uh, I'm also the acting president of the West Home and Walks Civic Association. Um, I was asked to get that started since everybody thought I had a lot of free time, which is fine. Um, but it's really become a, a larger than life issue. If I, as the acting president of the, of the civics and or any other civic member, is interested, um, either you need people to vet, to serve, or if you want us to get the word out, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, and our next meeting is uh, April 3rd. Thank you very much. Uh, last thing. Um, I, 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 my hearing's not that good, but I was, I was in the back and I thought, Roy, uh, if he got an increase in his flood insurance, he was going to donate that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had bad increase. hearing. If I get uh, an increase in my flood insurance, I thought, I, he's going to no, donate. An increase in the deduction, I thought he was going to uh, <laughs> donate it to one of the uh, groups. Excellent. Thank you and good Excellent, night. Excellent, Mike. Thanks. Judy Vining? Hi. 
<clears throat> Judy Vining, Long Beach. Um, I'm here actually to remind everybody that on, oh my God, on Saturday the 27th of April, the Long Beach Police Department, Long Beach Aware, and the Drug Enforcement Agency are sponsoring our semi-annual, semi, right? Biannual, whatever. Twice a year. Twice a year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> our twice a year um, drug take back day. And what we do is anything but sharps are, are allowed. Um, the police department are there with us. We, we can't do it alone. You have to have law enforcement. And we also have the DEA that comes and picks up any of the um, disposed of medications and takes it somewhere around Republic Airport for a burn. So, but we also, while we're doing that, we have some volunteers with us and we give out what are called deterra bags that people can use in between for any unused medication, over the counter, it doesn't matter. You're not supposed to flush anything. So with these deterra bags, hold up to 90 pills, you fill them to the line, I think, halfway with warm water, you shake it, you put all your pills in, and you can throw it away anywhere without any damage. We also, at the same time, give out um, some literature and, unfortunately, but needed, fentanyl test strips, um, because you never know. April 27th. April 27th, in front of City Hall, um, we will have acting commissioner's scale that we then weigh the um, weigh the drugs that we get. Mostly we get a lot of over-the-counter. Sometimes we get um, a lot of people who unfortunately had a spouse or a family member pass away from cancer. So there are a lot of major medications that you don't want in the water supply. You don't want out on the streets and you don't want in somebody's medicine cabinet. So, okay. please, I mean, we have it. I think it's on the website. Even. Right, John? Yes. It is on the city website. We've been pushing it, but Okay. Um, it's a service we do for the community in partnership with the thank police. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, Crystal Lake. Three times a charm. Good evening again, gentlemen. I would just like to give you a brief just history. Just that up to you. There Good you go. evening again, Crystal Lake. I would like to give you gentlemen a brief history regarding environmental justice. Presidential Executive Order 12898, Environmental Justice, Federal Actions that were signed into law to address disproportionate burdens and communities of color, low to moderate income, being underserved. Federal actions from various agencies, agriculture, commerce, defense, energy, education, health and human services, homeland security, HUD, interior, justice, state, treasury, transportation, and veterans affairs. And I say this because North Park, and I've said this spiel before, unfortunately, since on or about 2006, through various administrations, North Park is an environmental justice and New York State disadvantaged community. So the first gentrification was change order 72497, C block 277. Section 5991, East Harrison Street closed within North Park. I resided on East Harrison Street, 5991, lots 32 and through 33, a legal three-family home. Also, that included Pine Street, okay, um, 59277, 3, 59104, 83, that's the entire Pine Town houses. That's what became of the housing that was destroyed. And I'm saying this because I understand Bayfront, Bayside, whatever redevelopment, whatever is coming. The project can be absolutely fabulous. However, 
I definitely, in my community and anyone else, should not be gentrified again. It would be a violation of our civil rights because it is known. Even though everyone says the statute of limitations has passed, okay, and I understand that, but honestly, gentlemen, I would argue that fact because of the pattern of the ongoing pattern of practice. And unfortunately, living because of segregation, only where we were allowed to live by an industrial area, water, okay, pollutants from an active incinerator site, 5979505, the carcinogens, dioxin 15 times higher than EPA standards, cadmium, lead, a host of carcinogens that I stand before you by God's grace and mercy. Five generations within my family, okay, endured for decades the exposures. So, and not only my family, as well as many others. So as this project moves forward, I would ask each and every one of you and any other entities that are involved to take all of those circumstances into consideration, not to have the same history repeat itself over and over and over again. I am EJ to my core, okay? It's in my DNA. It's in my children's DNA. It's in my grandchild's DNA from what I experienced. And I did not come from poverty, but I lived and grew up in North Park. I was very blessed. And it didn't matter your economic status. That's the only location you were allowed to live. So as Bayfront moves forward, it can be done in a manner that everyone would benefit equally and have equity. Absolutely. As well as the city of Long Beach. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree so, more. Thank you, thank gentlemen. You. Thanks. And while on regarding Equinor. Uh, well, we just. Uh, We're done. Yeah. I, okay. Th thank you. Next time. I, you spoke eloquently, and I, I agree with you. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Michael Zakai. Hey. How are you? Hello. Michael Zakai, 321 West Beach Street. Um, I want to talk about the library. Um, I'm glad you go there. I'll give directions to the rest of the council on how to get there, right? Um, in the children's section of the library, there is indoctrination, really. Like, for, for little, very little kids, telling them that they could just change their gender just because they think that they, just because they, they feel like they're a different gender. That's just not true. Um, and I think they're just trying to poison the next generation. Um, and I think that that should, that should be uh, getting out of our libraries. We almost made it. What? Uh, thank you. I, I, I appreciate uh, your comments. And um, it, it is uh, startling to uh, see titles like that and books like that uh, in the library. But uh, we also have the First Amendment in, in, of the Constitution. And that entitles anybody to say pretty much whatever they want as long as they don't hurt somebody. So while I agree with you about the books personally, uh, in terms of the library, I think a library is a place where you should be able to find anything that's out there in print as long as it's not por pornographic or, or uh, as I said, uh, harmful. But uh, I agree with your, uh, your, your sentiment personally. I, I can't speak for the council or for the city in that respect. Thank you for, thank you for getting up. Paula Banks Davis, the doc doctor, right? Thank you. You stayed right till the end. It's a good thing we put you 10th, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, thank you very much. I'm just um, kidding. I just want to say, first of all, it's my pleasure to donate them. My priority is saving lives, so I know they'll be put to, be put to very good use. My question is, on West Bay Drive, they're replacing the streetlights. Are we replacing all of them, perchance? Okay, and the rest that are broken, are they going to somehow be fixed? We will replace them. We're trying to do it so it doesn't kill the budget. So we're doing around five annually. Mm -hmm. We're doing about five annually. To, so there's 20 total. So what we're trying to do is slowly replace all of them. So we recognize that as an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a safety issue. So if, as soon as you can do that, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And th thank you for all you did for Long Beach very much. Eileen Hessian. Eileen Hessian, Long Beach. Um, there are so many good things that go on in our town, and I just wanted to give kudos to a couple of things that went on recently. The first was that the Long Beach Historical Society had a fundraising gala called Woodstock Revisited. It had about 150 people attend. Good time. Um, and the second one to go along with that is the Long Beach Magnolia Senior Center had about 100 people at a bingo game at St. Mary's last week. And at both of those parties, Volunteers went out and asked restaurants and stores to donate prizes and raffles. I don't believe any one of our merchants said no to that. We got great merchants. We had tremendous prizes at both functions, and that's all due to the residents, uh, to the uh, merchants and and the restaurants. I think it should remind us to shop local. They are asked not only by these two people, but by the PTAs and by every other, and they always say yes, and they always give. So we have to shop local. They need us, we need them. Um, while I'm up here anyway, I might as well mention two other great things that happened in our great city this last week. The first was um, the Long Beach High School gave an unbelievable production of Chicago. It was, it was like a, Holly, a uh, Broadway production. The singing, the dancing, everything about it was just top rate. And the second thing um, is our library. They had a beautiful um, movie about Toby Page, our local artist who I think everybody knows. She's 94 years old. There was standing room only. It was incredible. And I just want to say our library has so much to give. It's not just books. And, you know, we should use it more often, I guess. That's all. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. We, we do live in a great town. We have great merchants. And they do. They, they donate all the time. So uh, thank you for mentioning that. Jackery Odom. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jackie Odom, Long Beach. I come here to speak tonight because I have a broken heart. When I see what is happening with the MLK Center, I go by some time in tears. I'm here pleading, pleading the blood of Jesus. And I say I'm pleading the blood of Jesus I know this matter is in litigation, and it's been in there for a few years. I'm pleading this evening to the city manager and to the city council, please work with the North Park area to try to get that place out of litigation. It sit there, dominant, underutilized, 
And there's so many people in this community that can use that center and the programs that it can offer. I speak from the heart. I put 19 years into the MLK Center. And we had every program, anything that you thought that you want was there in the MLK Center. I would like to see those days come back before I go where I have to go. So I'm asking you to please, and I plead the blood of Jesus, that this can be done. I thank you very much. And while I'm speaking here, also on Sherman Brown Park, I hope, I'm like Crystal, I hope this has been since the year of 210, and now it's 224 on Sherman Brown Park. If she is saying that she wants to see it completed, what do you think I want? Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing that up. When, when Mr. Hodge spoke earlier about MLK, I was going to comment. Uh, I decided not to, but now that you bring it up, I, I couldn't agree more. We talk about it quite often amongst the council, uh, with, with Dan, with the city manager. I agree with you, something has to be done. It's on the list, but it's gonna, it's gonna move closer up to the top. It's gonna go to the top of the list because we gotta do something with it. So thank you for bringing that up. And that concludes uh, Good and Welfare. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your comments. And arrive home safely. Have a great rest of your night.